And today we're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell. According to the New York Times, she met Jeffrey Epstein at a party sometime in the early 90s. From then on, they were in each other's lives for better or worse, mostly worse. So how did this French-born, Oxford-educated, former billionaire's daughter become an alleged child-abusing sex trafficker for the rich and famous? Simple, like everything else in life, at a party. Hi, I'm Amy with True Crime Recaps. According to people that knew them, Ghislaine did anything and everything to please him. Let's just say she was so intent on pleasing the boss back then that she earned herself a new title. These days, she's known as inmate number 02879-509. Here's just one odd, very creepy story to back up that statement. So a friend of hers, Christopher Mason, was a well-known parody songwriter. Like, for example, if he was writing a song about you, he would talk to your friends and family to get information he could use to write the song. You know, stuff about what you like, your habits, little quirks, think fucking lyrics about 24-hour erections and schoolgirl crushes. Christopher Mason, he's quoted as saying, she has always been as cunning as they come. She wasn't going to be with Epstein all those years and not have some insurance. The secret stash of sex tapes I believe Ghislaine has squirreled away could end up being her get out of jail card if the authorities are willing to trade. She has copies of everything Epstein had. They could implicate some twisted movers and shakers. Not only did Epstein like to capture himself with underage girls on camera, but he wanted to make sure he had something to hold over the rich and powerful men who took advantage of his sick largesse. If Ghislaine goes down, she's going to take the whole damn lot of them with her. And I'll bet anything that once it comes out that Ghislaine has those tapes, these men will be quaking in their Italian leather boots. So when asked about Ghislaine Maxwell this week. I just wish her well, frankly. Now, Ghislaine is exactly the kind of criminal behind the criminal we're talking about. She was the one who basically made the whole thing possible, and she knew it. That she and Jeffrey Epstein rationalized together and they created a very powerful bond that rose to the level of delusion. And I'm not talking about psychosis. I'm not talking about not knowing right from wrong. I'm talking about a self-delusion where you tell yourself that everything that you're doing is right. I mean, think about it. She related to these young women fraudulently. She had all the, the features of a sociopath impulsivity, recklessness, failure to plan ahead. Now you might say she's calculating, but remember when she was driving with these young women in a limo, she would ask the limo driver to pull over. She would jump out, she would run into a schoolyard or a park and give her numbers to young people, 14 year olds, 13 year olds. In one secretly released email from her to Epstein, she wrote that she would appreciate it if he could get Shelly to come out and say she was his girlfriend. Epstein said he was okay with that and went on to reassure her that she had done nothing wrong and that she should start acting like it. That email exchange is wrong on so many different levels. Legally, it proves Ghislaine was lying when her lawyer argued she should be offered bail because she hasn't spoken to Epstein in more than 10 years. And you're probably wondering who Shelly is in that email. There's been a lot of speculation about that, but according to Tatler.com, Shelly is Shelley Lewis, a spiritual entrepreneur and the daughter of a British billionaire. Because of course she is now. I've never been great at math, but let's see, this is 2020 and that email is dated 2015. So yeah, that communication is fairly recent. It also proves that Ghislaine knew her presence was required in order to put the victims at ease. They would take them to the movies and treat them to shopping trips. After developing a rapport with the victims, Maxwell then tried to normalize sexual abuse with a minor victim through a process known as grooming. Which is why one of their alleged longtime victims, Virginia Roberts, is writing a book about her experiences entitled The Billionaire's Playboy Club. Excerpts from that manuscript and other previously secret documents have recently been unsealed as part of a 2016 civil lawsuit brought against Ghislaine by Virginia. 
Among other bombshells, these documents reveal that a 15-year-old Virginia first met Ghislaine at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club in South Florida. She was working there as a locker room attendant. Virginia says Ghislaine lured her into Epstein's world under the guise of paying her extra money to give Epstein massages. Her lawsuit alleges Ghislaine and Epstein ordered her to have sex with other powerful men by telling her to give them a massage. Yeah, that's their not-so-secretive code word. According to Virginia's book, Epstein and Ghislaine took turns sexually abusing her and frequently encouraged their friends to do the same. Apparently, Ghislaine was not shy about discussing her other sexual rendezvous, including pleasuring George Clooney in the bathroom at some random event. In her deposition, Virginia was asked about some of the men that sexually abused her. The list includes politicians, hotel chain owners, and even royalty. I, I never have really parted. Um, and and, and I've, I've never really felt the need to go and party. She says she met you in 2001. She dined with you. She danced with you. You bought her drinks. You were in Tramp nightclub in London and she went on to have sex with you in a house in Belgravia belonging to Ghislaine Maxwell. Didn't happen. There are a number of things that are wrong with that story. One of which is that, is that I don't know where the bar is in, in um, Tramps. Um, she did remember one specific, ew, fact. In her book, she claims that Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, used a caricature puppet of himself to grope her with. And Ghislaine and Epstein gave it to him for that purpose. Now that's just one instance, one victim of Ghislaine and Epstein's, but it paints a picture of the kind of twisted stuff they were into and how they worked together to commit their crimes. And make no mistake, when Epstein was arrested and committed suicide in prison, Ghislaine knew her role in the abuse was going to be revealed and she would be behind bars. That's why she's been on the run for the last year. So, how did she pull that off? In December of 2019, she formed a new LLC company. and She used it to anonymously buy herself a little hideaway named Tucked Away in Bradford, New Hampshire. She went to great lengths to try and keep her name and face out of the public eye. Her phone bill was under the name G Max. Any packages shipped to her were under a fake name. For protection, she used her connections to recruit former British Army officers as security and errand runners. These were the people going into town to buy her the things she didn't want to order online. Which makes me wonder what the good folks of Bradford, New Hampshire thought was going on in that mansion with all these British military officers roaming around their little town. On July 2nd, the FBI finally caught up with her. We learned she had slithered away to a gorgeous property in New Hampshire, continuing to live a life of privilege while her victims live with the trauma inflicted upon them years ago. Agents broke through the locked gate, got to the front door, announced themselves, and yelled for her to give herself up. Instead, Ghislaine ran into another room to try and hide, which forced agents to break down the door and arrest her without any more struggle. Prosecutors said that while the agents were searching the house, they found a cell phone wrapped in tinfoil on a desk. They called that a seemingly misguided effort to evade detection. Yeah, and it's not her only attempt to cover things up. You, you want a few more examples? You got it. According to Time.com, she first toured the New Hampshire mansion with a man who said he was her husband. Who is this man? She won't say, but she does admit that she is married. She's also refusing to admit that it was her own company that bought the house for a million in cash in the first place. After she was arrested, she insisted she didn't know the name of the company that owned the house and she was just a guest there. Today, she's facing six conspiracy counts relating to sexual abuse and transportation of minors and two counts of perjury because when authorities asked her if Jeffrey Epstein ever recruited young girls for sexual abuse, she said, I don't know what you're talking about. This woman cannot stop lying, even when it comes to how much money she actually has. She told the courts she has less than a million in the bank and no monthly income. According to Time.com, prosecutors argue that she has actually 
15 different bank accounts with balances ranging from hundreds of thousands to more than 20 million. It's no wonder the judge called her a flight risk and denied bail. And where did all that money get her? All the way to the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, just a few miles away from the Manhattan Metropolitan Correctional Center, because that's where Epstein supposedly committed suicide last August. Ghislaine did her best to stay out of prison, though. While she was being indicted, her lawyers requested that she be allowed to await her trial not in prison, but on lockdown in a luxury New York City hotel. Obviously, that would be more comfortable, but you can bet Ghislaine probably thought it'd be safer too, considering what happened to Epstein. The prison authorities seemed to be thinking the same thing. At the beginning, she was moved from cell to cell to avoid potential assassins, according to the Daily Mail. She was also on suicide watch, even though she told everyone who would listen that she was not suicidal. Doesn't sound like much suicide watch, but in prison, suicide watch means being woken up every few hours, forced to wear paper clothing, and not even being allowed to have sheets on your bed. These days, she's off suicide watch, but she's still in isolation with 24-hour surveillance. If she was to go into general population, the former warden is quoted as saying she should prepare for the worst since fellow inmates will see attacking her as a badge of honor. So, what's next? Well, Ghislaine is pleading not guilty, and her trial is scheduled for July 21st, 2021. Assuming she makes it to trial, it should last for about three weeks, and if she's found guilty on all charges, she could wind up in jail for 35 years, which is a pretty long time considering she's already 58. Well, that's your recap for today. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me. If you enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe to get all the crime in half the time. And remember to come back Sunday and hang out with Chris. See you soon.